Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, I'm Vicky Paloi and welcome. Please do not leave without subscribing. So our travel vlogs are officially done. Thank you so much for those of you who watched. Thank you so much for the great engagement. I enjoyed literally every bit of it. The comments, the shares on Instagram. Thank you, thank you so much. So as I promised, I'm back with a sit down video to give you guys um, little details about the trip in terms of cost, activities, how to book, which travel agent did I use because I did get a few questions regarding that information. So if you are interested or you are interested in traveling to Bali soon, anything that this is valuable information for you, please do watch this video until the end. I'm going to say pretty much everything regarding the trip. However, I must make a disclaimer that if you didn't watch the Bali vlogs, this video might not make sense for you. So if you are interested in traveling to Bali or you are going to Bali soon, anything, this is information that you need. I do encourage you to watch um, the Bali vlogs so that you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. Otherwise, some of the things are just not going to make sense. I do not want this video to be too long, so I'm just going to get straight into it. First things first, um, the most common question that I got asked was which travel agency did I use if I did use any. Yes, I did use a travel agency and I used Yellowhead Travel. Initially, I saw them on Instagram. I followed them for quite some time, checked out their website, checked out some reviews and I just fell in love. And I just thought, let me give them a try. Do I recommend 100%? 10 out of 10 excellent savers, very efficient, value for money. Like at some point during the trip, I felt like I actually could have paid more for this, you know. Their savers was so great. Everything was just top tier. So I highly, highly do recommend the travel agent. I will link their Instagram as well as their website on the description box down below so that you can check them out should you be interested in traveling with them another common question that i got was how much did i pay for the trip um firstly it was a package so the package included flights to bali and coming back from bali so return flights it also included accommodation for all the days that we traveled it also included everyday breakfast or daily breakfast so we visited three hotels and in all the hotels we would get breakfast in the morning um it also included a host so there was a guy if you did watch um my my vlogs you will know who i'm talking about which is why i encourage that you do watch the vlogs there was a guy who was hosting us for the entire time that we were there his name is ketut he's such an amazing host very lovely he made sure that everything is literally taken care of like literally when you needed something he was there a call away or just a shout away so the package also included that we didn't have to like pay him extra or anything so he picked us up from the airport when we arrived in bali he transported us like around from the hotel to our activity site he also took us from our hotel to the airport on the day that we were leaving which was very like convenient for me so the money that we paid also included that so included the ubud day tour the full day tour ubud that we did if you did watch the ubud vlog you will know which one i'm talking about so in the ubud tour there is the bali swing the bali nest the waterfall the vintage drop top car tour as well as the coffee and tea tasting at a coffee plantation so what else did the package include um for now that's it if i do remember throughout the vlog or if something comes up that was included in the package i will indicate one thing that i am not going to tell you guys is exactly how much we paid reason being that um prices are subject to change depending on many things one of the things can be is it like peak travel season or is it not such things um can influence how much in total 
you are going to pay for the package however like i said i am going to link their website and their instagram so if you click on those links you will see the different packages that they have including packages for bali me saying prices are subject to change it's not like too much difference you'll find that it's just 1000 less or 1000 more sometimes it might even be exactly the same but if you want to know how much the packages go for please do click the links in my description box down below so that's what the package included and i feel like it was value for money like i was so happy at no point did i feel like i wasted money so our trip started um, on the 2nd of August, we left Johannesburg on the 2nd of August, came back to Johannesburg on the 12th of August. So on the 2nd we left, we obviously left at Oar Tambo International Airport, it was during the day. The first flight was from Oar Tambo to Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, where we connected to Singapore and then we finally flew from Singapore to Bali. It was quite um, a long travel time I must say. There is another option though when you are traveling to Bali. You can travel via Dubai so it's from Johannesburg to Dubai then from Dubai to Bali. Those are the only two flight options that I know. So you can either use the one that we used which is Johannesburg to Ethiopia, Ethiopia to Singapore, Singapore to Bali or Johannesburg to Dubai, Dubai to Bali. Did I enjoy the long traveling time? Absolutely not. There was a flight that was, um, I think, plus minus 9 to 10 hours, if I'm not mistaken. The one from Ethiopia to Singapore, it was so long, but we slept, thankfully. Um, and the one from Johannesburg to Ethiopia, I think it was 4 hours. Then from Singapore to Bali, it was not more than 3 hours, 2 hours, 30 minutes, plus minus. So... Yeah, the only long, long, long flight that we had was the one from Singap from Ethiopia to Singapore. However, the catch here is that you land in Singapore. And Singapore is such a beautiful, Singapore airport actually, such a beautiful airport. So I do encourage that you do take um, the... Um, one that we took which is China's by Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Singapore, Singapore, Bali. You will enjoy the Changi Airport in Singapore. It's so lovely. Um you did see the Singapore vlog, so there's quite a few things to get up to there during your layover. You won't even feel it. So I do feel like it's more of an exciting option in terms of which flight to pick. If you are traveling with a travel agency, of course, sometimes you they will just book flights. You don't necessarily have a say, especially if it's not a private trip, if it's a group trip. I did not mention at the beginning of this video that we did take a group trip. So if it is a group trip, you don't necessarily have a say to pick which flight you want, unless if it is a private trip. But I do encourage that you take the Singapore route, even if it's a private trip, just so you can experience and enjoy um, Changi Airport a little bit for a few hours, you know. And then we got to Bali on the 3rd of August, which is the following day. We arrived at the hotel 9 p.m. Bali time. No, not at the hotel, at the airport. We arrived at Bali Airport, 9 p.m. Bali time. We had to sort out that main stuff, which is the immigration, the visa. I'm going to talk about that um, shortly. When we were done, we finally went to the hotel. I think we got to the hotel around 11 p.m. or 12 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. And because it was late at night, our host or driver, Ketut, was kind enough to like pass by McDonald's so that we can get something to eat before we arrive at the hotel. Um, when it comes to the visa, you don't you do need a visa to travel to bali but you don't need it prior to traveling so what happens is you do travel to bali and then when you get to the airport at the immigration you get a visa on arrival you have to pay for this and in rents it was i think 650 again depending on the currency at the time it might change but not too much so if you want to budget for this i would um, advise that you budget between 650 and 750 
get it on arrival so you do not need to have a visa prior to traveling you will get it at the airport and then we got to the hotel slept and then on the 4th of august it was our first official day in bali and that is where the activities kick started i was so tired at this point so we first arrived in Ubud, Bali. So our first day was the Ubud, the full Ubud day tour that I told you guys about earlier on. That included the Bali nest, the Bali swings, the tea and coffee plantation, the waterfall, as well as the vintage drop top cattle. All of these were included in the money that we paid for the trip in the trip package. So the first day of um our Bali travel was essentially the Ubud day tour. Literally like an entire day, woke up, had breakfast, um, went to the nest, the swings, they were so lovely. We did the coffee tasting, we did a drop top car tour where they like drive you um, in the scenic routes of Ubud with lovely stunning views and then we finally went to the waterfall Another thing that I forgot to mention is that at Ubud we stayed at a hotel called Dessa Visesa Ubud Resort Such a stunning hotel. If you did watch the Ubud vlog, you know what I'm talking about very clean, calm, serene, lovely swimming pool, lovely views from your hotel room. So, yeah. And that was it for our first day, which was the 4th of August. And then the following day, which was the 5th of August, we went to... I think that's when we did the spa. Yes, we went to the spa. So in the morning, we first started with the floating breakfast. The floating breakfast was at our hotel. It is done at one of the villas in the hotel, depending, I think. But when we were there, they said that we will do it at one of the villas in the hotel. So they like prepare a big full breakfast for you on a tray and you have it um, inside a pool while it floats. It's called floating breakfast. We had to pay um, separate for this and it was 700 rand so if you are traveling with a travel agency or the one that i use yellowhead travels you pay the you pay the 700 to them and then they book the floating breakfast on your behalf and this goes for all the other um activities that we had to pay for ourselves extra you can do this for yourself like book all the activities for yourself which i think i'm just speculating might be a bit cheaper to book them activities for yourself but i was like you know what for convenience sake i'm just gonna give the travel agent money so that they can book all the activities on my behalf floating breakfast was one of the activities that we paid extra for and it went for about 700 rand and then later on the day we went to the spa it is like one of the luxury spas in bali it's in ubud it's called kaveri spa where we had our flower bath luxury flower bath like i even in bali if you don't do the flower bath and we also got um full body massages so in rent the flower bath cost 1200 not more than 1300 though 1200 as well as the um, full body massage which was plus minus 900 um there is an option of sharing with your friend or your partner you share the bath as well as the massage room which comes obviously at a discounted price kanye and i didn't share the bath we shared the massage room so we essentially paid for ourselves i had my own flower bath she had hers and then we got full body massages in the same massage room so if you book with a partner like sharing both the bath as well as the um, massage room it comes at a discounted price and then later that day we went to a beach club in Ubud the famous beach club in Ubud Kretia Beach 
club this is also an additional cost obviously of your own it has the restaurant side where you can sit and eat and then there's the pool side that has day beds the day beds do have a minimum spend so if you are in a group the minimum spend is actually so affordable um, minimum spend meaning like if you book that specific bed you will be required to spend at least for example maybe six thousand or five thousand rands so if you are in a group like i said it's much easier to like accumulate the five thousand quickly you're gonna be buying food you're gonna be buying drinks and all of that if it is a large group if it's just two people traveling if the bag is huge yes you can do that you can book a day bed and if it's just two people imagine how much food do you have to get or how much drinks do you have to get we sat at the restaurant side where we ate first then went to the pool side at the restaurant side there is no minimum spend you just get there buy your drinks buy your lunch and also at the pool side there is a bar where you can get drinks order drinks um anytime you want so if it's a group i do recommend the day beds and if it's just two people traveling or you're a solo traveler you can go to the restaurant side of Kretia. Kretia was so 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 fun like everyone is literally having the time of their lives no one cares what who is doing what who is wearing like everyone is just having the time of their lives and then it was the 6th of august it was time to leave ubud and go to giliti or gili trawangan island which is an island within bali so we checked out of desa visesa resort and went to giliti so getting to giliti there is no way you can get there by car or any other thing there is no airport there's nothing you have to get there by boat so we had to take a boat from Ubud to Giliti again our host um drove us to the harbor where we had to get the boat and then he arranged everything like boat admin and all of that we did pay money for the boat like transport money it was not expensive though I think that's why I forgot I think it was 300 rands or something that is to go and come back yeah it was 300 rands so we paid that to the travel agent again and they did the entire admin for us we literally just got to the harbor and folded our arms and the tags were brought to us there was um tourist fee that you need to pay when you get to the harbor it's not expensive though not more than 100 rands yeah so we did that got into the boat Gilitrawangan Island. We arrived there. It was such a stunning island. We stayed at Oceano Jambuluwuk Resort, which was by the beach. We caught the most stunning sunset. There is horse rides as well by the island. There is bikes so you can cycle around the island. Because the island is so small, you can literally cycle the entire island in a day there is horse carriages like i said there is absolutely no cars on the island so the modes of transport is your legs is the bike or bicycle or horse carriages that is literally the only ways you can get um through the island like you can get moving through the island so we stayed at giliti for two nights and one day we arrived during the day so we managed to have like the rest of the day in Giliti, which was the evening quite beautiful sunsets saw people riding horses by the beach um there was a restaurant at the hotel so we had dinner there very lovely the accommodation was also nice um and that's what we did on the 7th of august and then no on the 6th of august and then on the 7th of august that is where we went for the luxury um yacht cruise this was an additional or extra payment that you have to make for yourself and it cost 1900 rands yes that is 2000 rands by the time you go probably i'm joking so it costs um 1900 rands 
this includes breakfast um when you get to the boat because it's like a half day tour so you're either gonna do the morning one that ends um midday or the one that starts from midday to sunset so it includes breakfast it includes welcome drinks i think i got two welcome drinks and it also includes um lunch we had asian or indonesian um cuisine i think it's indonesian cuisine actually we had indonesian cuisine for lunch it was very lovely um yeah that was it it's basically like your normal yacht cruise i think it is a bit um on the price here or on the expensive side like 1900 rands per person is such a stretch for me personally but when we got there and we had the breakfast we had the lunch we had the drinks i felt like it was kind of worth it um so if you are going to go to gili tea or gili trawangan and you want an exciting activity to get up to i do recommend the luxury yacht cruise but you must be ready to pay 1900 rand you can book this um on your own i forgot what the company is called but it is on my gili trawangan vlog or you can pay the travel agent and they will do the whole admin for you in terms of like logistics you obviously have to move from the hotel to the harbor you use the horse carriages and then going back from the harbor to the hotel the horse carriages um just to tell you guys like how they work they work just like uber or bolt here in south africa so there's an app where you can request it comes to the hotel the carriage can fit up to three people comfortably so you pay 150 indonesian rupiah i'm not sure how much that is in rents but maybe around 200 rands and it takes you like anywhere like the price is standard it's 150 indonesian rupiah anywhere to the island it takes you there so if it's three people you can like separate it amongst the three of you if it's just yourself then that's how much you're going to pay by yourself like i said it takes you anywhere to the island so it had to take us from the hotel to the harbor and back to back um to the hotel from the harbor so yeah those are the costs for the horse carriages and then another tip that i have when it comes to like traveling to gili tea because the horse carriages are so small imagine it's the two of you or three of you and with these huge luggage bags it's not going to be comfortable at all you will actually be forced to take a horse carriage yourself and then your luggage on another horse carriage which is a more cost for you so luckily for us our travel agent knew all of that and she advised that um when going to gili tea take like a small day bag since we were staying there for two nights take a small day bag pack the clothes that you're gonna need for two nights your swimsuit your toiletries your hat sunscreen that's literally all you need pack it in a small day bag and just take the day bag only with you so our luggage bags so our big luggage bags we're transported from um, the hotel we were staying at in Ubud to the third hotel that we were going to from Kiliti, that is in Seminyak. So they have like a storage there where travelers can keep their bags. They were safe. I didn't lose absolutely anything. Nothing was damaged. Nothing suspicious happened to my luggage. So if you are traveling with your Lohead Travels, I do assure you that your luggage is going to be safe if you will be traveling um, to gili tea as well so do not um be hesitant in terms of like leaving your luggage at first i was a bit hesitant i'm like mm -mm, there's no way i'm leaving my luggage for two days in a place that i am not familiar with but as the days got um by i was like you know what let me stop being a hard head and do what everyone else is doing and just trust the process i did that and absolute no regrets so don't be hesitant when they say that leave your luggage at the hotel when going to gili tea and that was um that was gili tea it was very lovely it's such a stunning stunning island i wish we had actually stayed there for like three nights at least and then we checked out of gili tea on the 8th of august we traveled by boat again from gili tea to the bali mainland and then from there we had transport to seminyak that was our third location in 
Bali third and last location so we stayed at Grand Mercure Hotel stunning hotel again at this point I felt like I actually didn't pay enough for these kinds of hotels you know stunning hotel it's giving five star very clean um, fine dining it's green beautiful big infinity swimming pools beautiful views like it was so lovely there is a room tour all the vlogs that i posted do have room tours so if you want to see all the accommodations that i'm talking about do head to the vlogs we checked in at seminyak on the 8th of august again we arrived late main reason for this is that there is like gang traffic or congestion in Bali. So moving from the harbor to the hotel in Seminyak, it's not too far, but because of the congestion, as well as the time that we moved from the harbor to Seminyak, there was like congestion. So that's why we ended up arriving at the hotel late. I was so astonished when I got to the hotel. Like I said, it's beautiful. We slept and then woke up on the 9th of August. That is when we went to Savaya Beach Club. I think I'm not sure if I had to pick between Kretia Beach Club and Savaya, which one would I go for? Like both of them were equally amazing. I cannot compare one to the other. Savaya has its own vibe and then Kretia has its own vibe as well. Both of them are stunning. Both of them have lovely views. With Kretia, like you have this lovely um view of the bali rice terraces and then with savai you have like a stunning beach view as you are sipping on your cocktails on that infinity pool so i really like cannot choose which one did i like more on the ninth we woke up in the morning we went to the market so our hotel is just close to the market you literally go out of the hotel down the street it's the market we went to the market got a few stuff we got to buy like local snacks and tried them out and then midday that is when we took um transport to savaya but myself kanye and matabelo before we went to savaya we asked to go to uluwatu temple again it is an extra cost to go to uluwatu temple i think we paid 70 indonesian rupiah in rand it's definitely not more than 150 rands like the entrance and then when you enter they give you a saro i think you have to put it on your waist just to show respect because you are entering a holy or religious place so the money includes that as well it has stunning views so when we got there i thought that we are going to go to the temple but i discovered that entry to the actual temple is now restricted because it is a holy place but before they used to allow entry to the temple then after we finished at Uluwatu temple we headed to Safaya that is where we spent the rest of the afternoon and the evening there Savaya also has a minimum spend we did have to get a day bed there like we had to because we didn't in Kretia and the minimum spend in Savaya is much more compared to the one in Kretia but again because we were like a huge group it was 10 of us because we were 10 the minimum spend was literally like nothing we even finished it to a point where we now had to pay for our individual orders so it does have a minimum spend as well but if you are in a group like it's not a trans match you can do it even if it's five of you so that was it transport to savaya we had to pay this for ourselves it was an extra cost i think each person paid 150 indonesian rupiah which is not more than 200 rand i may be getting the conversions wrong please excuse me if that is the case but i will um say either in rents or indonesian rupiah depending on which one do i remember the most but to go from the hotel to savaya we each paid 150 indonesian rupiah we gave this to our driver that was done um with savaya as well as the uluwatu temple and then the next day on the 10th it was a freestyle day where we literally had nothing to do so you had your choice of 
which place do you want to explore by yourself around Seminyak? I chose to not do anything because at this point I was tired like I just wanted to go back home like I was exhausted I felt like oh my gosh this vacation is so long so I opted to use the freestyle day to just chill at the hotel have lunch there swim there by the hotel pool because also the pool is nice I didn't want to leave um Seminyak or Grand Mekio Hotel without experiencing the hotel swimming pool or the hotel bar so that's what I did for the day yeah I woke up went for breakfast took a shower got ready for lunch dressed up nicely and went to chill by the day bed at the pool had drinks i had a salad i think if you watch my vlog you know what i'm talking about and then later that day that's when i had um a meeting with my research supervisor like school girl doesn't sleep even on holiday if you don't know i'm currently doing my honors in radiography so that's why i had to have like those few meetings with my supervisor to discuss research anyway it's not about that and we slept on the 10th and that was our last day in bali that was literally the vacation summed up i'm not sure if i forgot anything when it comes to bali if you guys have any more questions feel free to drop them in the comment section down below and then we went to spend a day in singapore this now takes me back to the beginning of the video where I said I do recommend taking the mini flight which is Johannesburg to Ethiopia, Ethiopia to Singapore, Singapore to Bali. So when you come back from Bali to South Africa, it's still the same. It's literally the same. So you will travel from Bali to Singapore, then Singapore to Ethiopia, then Ethiopia to Johannesburg. So again, I have to give it to our travel agent because they knew that we were gonna connect even like coming back. They booked a flight that would allow us to spend literally the whole day in Singapore. So we checked out on the 11th of august in the morning we had to leave the hotel i think around 6 a.m so that we can get to the airport and our flight from bali to singapore was around nine o'clock i think and then we arrived in singapore just before 12 um and we had like literally an entire day because our flight from singapore to ethiopia was the following day just after midnight like around 2 a.m so we had an entire day an entire night to spend in singapore and i was just so excited i remember when i got the call when they were telling us that we'll be spending a day in singapore i immediately knew that i am going to the museum of ice cream so that's why i got excited over there so again our host was there to check us out of the hotel in the morning transport us and our bags to bali airport and then we checked in got our flight to singapore the flight like i said it's not more than three hours when we got to singapore because we have now like the luggage bags and everything and we are trying to like explore singapore in a day we had to make means of how are we going to store our luggage or where are we going to store our luggage luckily singapore changi airport does have options of um putting your luggage away for as long as you want you pay for it obviously and then you leave your bags there again they are safe then you can go out and just um, explore Singapore. One thing that I have to mention here is that they do not allow you to leave the airport if your layover is not more than four hours. So our layover was definitely more than four hours. Like I said, an entire day basically. So we could leave the airport and go see like close by sites or go sightseeing nearby in singapore so we stored our bags and then we had our day in singapore it was literally a full day so kanye and myself decided that we are going to go to the museum of ice cream and we did that so from the airport we ubered the uber was not expensive i think it was like 300 rands 
from the airport to the museum of ice cream and at the museum of ice cream there is obviously like a ticket that you have to buy in rand it was this different ticket we got the premium anytime ticket i think that was like 1000 rand the anytime one meaning that they do not restrict you like you don't have to choose a time slot of what time will i get there we are just spending a day and we had to like travel from bali to singapore we didn't know exactly what time are we gonna finish with the admin like the airport admin the checking in and stuff or like baggage storage like we had no idea so we we're like let's just take the anytime ticket one to be safe which is more expensive but if you are definitely sure as to what time are you gonna get to the museum of ice cream you can get the premium ticket one you still get the same experience um just that it doesn't have like flexibility in terms of what time we'll get to the museum of ice cream but you still get to have like the same experience many 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 ice cream stations very tasty ice cream it was like the loveliest most tastiest ice cream i've ever had in my entire life many um playing stations as well in between like tasting the ice cream so it was such a lovely 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 experience if you love ice cream if you are like a child at heart if you are playful in nature i do recommend that you visit the museum of ice cream there's many kids but you're definitely gonna have the time of your life that's why i'm saying if you are a child at heart i do recommend that you do visit the museum of ice cream i saw this from um Mzwankile and caesar my favorite couple on instagram and youtube and in real life i saw this when they traveled to singapore they did visit the museum and when i saw their vlog a few months ago i was like I don't know when am i gonna go to singapore but the day i go this is the place that i have to visit like i was like anyway i'm leaving singapore without going to the museum of ice cream so shout out to zandile and caesar always plugging us when traveling some of us actually do watch the travel vlogs and we take tips take notes um like look at the places that we can visit when we go to certain places which is what actually encouraged me to like vlog my whole Bali experience because I do know that this is some useful information because I for one do um take this information seriously because I know that I love traveling very insightful like you get to see like what to expect when you get to a certain place so shout out to them and shout out to me for also giving you guys this information because i mean you know and then after the museum of ice cream we headed back to singapore changi airport like i said at the beginning of this video it's such a lovely airport we like toured the airport we went to jewel you know what jewel is if you've been to changi singapore or if you've watched my singapore vlog we went to jewel there was that like lovely waterfall thing going to these places within the airport is absolutely free you don't have to pay like extra to see these beautiful sites shout out to singapore like they did a thing there when it comes to their airport they did a thing so we toured the airport um before we knew it the day was over it was night time we went to have dinner at mcdonald's before um boarding for our flight to ethiopia and our vacation was basically done we did that changed into like comfortable clothing for the flight we boarded went to ethiopia from ethiopia we came to johannesburg we landed here on what time was it or oh, which day was it i think it was the 12th of august yes it was the 12th of august we landed here around 2 p.m the vacation was done how sad there is nothing more i can tell you at this point um like i said if you do have any questions drop them down below and i will definitely answer your questions i did get um a few people saying i should like give travel tips and all that how do i save for vacations i honestly do not know if like i can do that hey because i just i don't know like i just save 
like you know when you have to save for any other big purchase whether it's a car or a bag anything that is costly and you know that like you need a huge amount of money for this you save 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 that's literally what i did saving timelines are, are not going to be the same for all of us for you it might take you six months to save for such a trip and for me it might take me 12 months so um depending obviously we know ourselves better depending on that you know that i can manage to save this much for such an amount of time and then i'll be able to go on this dream vacation of mine the tip that i have is that don't put pressure on yourself take your time if you have to do one destination a year that's cool if you have to do one destination in three years that works for you it's still cool do what you need to do for yourself do not feel pressured by anyone or anything like please or else you're gonna be super stressed when you don't even have to so yeah i just knew kenya and i knew that we want to go to bali we committed to it we both saved towards it and then we picked the date that was suitable to the both of us um and that was about it honestly i don't know what will my next destination be but nonetheless i'm still excited for it and i'm going to start saving soon for my next destination and once i see that the money is enough this time then gonna go ahead and leave south africa again traveling is so nice guys like if you can i do recommend people think that it's too expensive they think we pay like hundreds of thousands not at all like it's absolutely doable it's absolutely doable and if you can do it highly highly recommend it especially if you are young like myself you are working you have like a decent job you don't have anything i feel like traveling is one of the things that you can literally put your money on and just go and see the world enjoy live your best life it is an investment to some extent you are investing in memories you are making stories um about yourself to tell about yourself to tell to your kids because if you don't travel imagine i don't travel right now and before i know it i'm 40 50 i can't do it because now there's this million people that are dependent on me i cannot even like save for a trip you know so i do recommend that if you can do it well you still can before you run out of time like you will definitely run out of time guys life is moving like you will never be younger again and the older we grow the more responsibilities we have so if you can prioritize traveling please do it and that's it from me for today i hope that i gave you guys a little bit of um insightful information when it comes to the bali vacation that i had a few weeks ago thank you, thank you so much if you watched up until the end of this video i hope that you guys found this information useful and if you are traveling to bali soon you will absolutely love 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 it the people are so kind very nice as well so yeah thank you so much for watching for the last time if you do have any questions Feel free to drop them on the comment section down below. I'm here to answer anything that I can be able to answer. And if I cannot, or if you feel like the travel agent can best answer that question that you have, feel free to go to their Instagram page, which I'm going to link on the description box down below. This video is absolutely not sponsored in any way by the travel agent. I am just... um doing a courtesy to you guys as my subbies and my audience to give you this information should you need it at some point now or in the future and i hope that you absolutely enjoyed it thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy this video give it a thumbs up comment down below what you enjoyed about um travel content that i had um drop any questions that you have if you haven't subscribed please do not 
allow this video to end without you subscribing lastly do follow me on my instagram at vicky underscore baloyi see you guys in the next video and it's gonna be a vlog i am so tired of talking okay but also how gorgeous do i look with this new hair it's been a few days um since the relaxing and it's still pretty much kind of nice yeah see you guys bye